Blue chips are self-destructing, a major Web 2 brand jumps ship on Web 3, and the Yuga Lab summoning is finally upon us. Welcome back to the Crypto Gorilla YouTube channel. It's the end of the week where we cover the biggest news stories you might have missed. If you enjoy this kind of content, would you kindly hit that subscribe button? And as usual, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Now, despite the crypto markets making a miraculous recovery this week, the NFT market is looking very red. Many projects are down bad in the past seven days. There is blood on the streets. And three of the biggest collections in the space, often referred to by many as blue chips, have completely fallen apart and their own communities are are attacking them out in public on Twitter and Discord. Now, those three projects being Moonbirds, Artifact, and Doodles, all of which are under their mint price in terms of US dollars, except for Doodles. But if we quickly look at them on Blur, you can see here Moonbirds, Doodles, and Clonex, all three of them are under four Ethereum, and they are the biggest losers of the week, the biggest being Moonbirds at minus 36% in the past seven days. Now, this has caused many people to second guess their purchases, is, saying, is there really such a thing as a blue chip? Can we really trust any of these teams? None of them have ever been able to recover from their all-time highs. Moonbirds once having a floor price of 40 Ethereum, and they've just been going lower and lower. And then a few weeks ago, we did have that podcast with Kevin Rose, where he went over the history of Moonbirds and the future. And many were not impressed with what they saw, saying that High Rise was just a copy-pasted version of On Cyber, which has been canceled. So the only thing that was delivered in the past year other than some events was a fanny pack and some socks now we also saw doodles getting trolled for this post about having golden socks people saying is this a joke if you look through the comments on their tweet it is very negative negative. and after such a long period of silence with no announcement the silence pretty much became a joke itself and then the founder saying we've delivered enough value to the genesis holders sparked a sell-off and now we have this message from poopy saying that they're no longer just an NFT project, which is great. I mean, by all means, grow your brand and don't be just an NFT project, be bigger than an NFT project. However, he also goes on to say that they're not gonna spend any more resources to appease the people who are just there for financial motivation, which I personally find is slightly ironic when you start a company by selling NFTs to people in return for zero equity, this community blows your project up and then it allows you to raise a ton of VC money and then you turn around and shame people for having a financial motivation when there's people in your community who have spent 30, 50, $100,000 on a doodle and they are down extremely bad. So it's really sad to see some of these collections go down. The one that reflects with me the most is obviously Artifact since I was a holder of a clone and a ton of Artifact NFTs. We did see them this week do the classic announcement of an announcement in the form of a tweet. And when the day came, they trolled a little bit with this GM tweet, but eventually did drop some news that season one of their forging event was finally being shipped to those who paid for it. Now, although this should have been a positive moment for all of the holders and all the people who paid for it, it did start to get a ton of backlash as people began to point out major differences in what was advertised and sold to us and what is being shipped out. Now, in their defense, they did say that what they were showing was not the final product. But if you look at some of these items, they are night and day. You have this jacket here, the color is different, the positioning of the patches is way higher up on the shoulder. If you compare the hat, you have a baseball hat versus what they're delivering. It seems like, I guess we can call this a dad hat. And while people might prefer this style, the patches in my opinion look nowhere near what was promised. It has a very thick black border and it just really doesn't look as nice. But what really takes the cake for me is the demon shoes. If you look at the original shoe that we saw, it had a beautiful, I guess you could call this like crocodile leather in black with all of these scales and the texture, it really stands out. And when you look at the product people are gonna be receiving, it's pretty much leather with a little bit of scaling in it. And it just looks like a normal Air Force One. So to me, this isn't worth $600. It might never have been worth $600, but this is definitely not worth $600 just to have an Air Force One with an artifact logo on it. So I'm really wondering why they did this, especially that they charge such high prices for these items. I'm not sure why you would show all these items and advertise it like that without knowing if it's the final 
product you can actually deliver. So I find this very unfortunate. I love Artifact as a brand, but I've personally just given up in the team. I've dumped all of my Artifact NFTs, except for my Animus egg, and of course my Murakami shoes. I'm still debating if I'm gonna get those because I am receiving the Murakami hoodie. And even though it's 0.5, it's a lot of money. I do like that it's gonna match. So I haven't made up my decision about that, but it's just very disappointing. And I'm personally happy, even though I took a big L on my clone, I took a five figure loss on it. I'm happy that I got out during the blur pump because I'd be down another 50% if I would have waited to get out now. Now one, let's call it blue chip that I still have a ton of faith in is pretty much anything out of Yuga Labs. And this week was the long awaited summoning. Now, unfortunately, even a company like Yuga Labs can make mistakes. There was an error in the metadata, specifically with the companion trait, where people who didn't actually have a companion attached to their NFT said that they did, and those who did have it, it said that they didn't. And while they did pull the metadata while they fixed it, there was a ton of people who did purchase these items, assuming that there was a companion, they paid a premium price, and when the metadata was finally fixed, they were bamboozled, and they no longer had a companion. However, Yuga Labs being the ghosts that they are, refunded everybody that they this happened to so round of applause to Yuga Labs and other companies should be taking notes specifically the ones that we mentioned before this so what's next for this collection if we take a look at their roadmap you can see here the mech type reveal is happening in late March I believe this is just the information about the mechs and not the actual reveal where the reveal itself is going to be happening in early April as you can see with the it came through the rift event which is going to be followed by the second game in the beginning of May and if you look at this image here here, it does look like a grid game where your character is going to move from square to square. In more NFT news, DGods announced that they would be doing Bitcoin NFTs. It's going to be a 535 piece collection. The sale is going to be public only, first come, first serve. Now the timeline for this, they estimate is going to happen sometime Friday afternoon. However, they said it won't go past the weekend. The inscriptions are from 77,236 to 77,770. And if we look on the order website you can see they have of course already been inscribed now the price is unclear they do mention that you should have 0.44 Bitcoin in a wallet which is roughly eleven thousand dollars so it might get very expensive and there will be an auction for 34 of these pieces where they say auction slash raffle which is going to be in their dust token in other news magic Eden just dropped this tweet signaling that they are launching their very own Bitcoin marketplace now this is amazing news for ordinal nfts the tools that exist are pretty sketchy and a lot of people are still trading over the counter with spreadsheets. So it's really great to see a reputable player enter the Bitcoin scene. And I wouldn't be shocked if we saw OpenSea launch their version of a Bitcoin marketplace in the near future after this announcement. In brand news, we have the card company Bicycle to launch a physical deck of cards featuring bored apes. Applications are open to anybody who owns a bored ape. And in return for applying, holders will receive a one of one 1227 Joker NFT, 1227 being the number of the board ape owned by this company. And those who are selected will have their very own card featured in the deck. Now applications will close on April 7th. The winners will be announced on April 19th. And although this is only open for board apes, they do comment here on a tweet that they might do a mutant deck in the future. Next up, Sotheby's is gonna be holding multiple NFT auctions this month, starting with a meme inspired auction based on the oddly satisfying subreddit from March 17th till March 24th. And it's gonna feature artists such as Beeple, Louis Ponce, Anima, Lucas Zanato, and Josh Pierce. Once this one ends, they're gonna have a following auction in New York from March 24th till March 31st, which is gonna be called Natively Digital Glitchism, and is gonna feature glitch artists such as Xcopy and Jake the DGen. Next, we have Sesame Street launching their very own NFT collection. It's gonna be launching through Vive on March 19th, which of course has upset a ton of people on the internet. The collection is made up of 5,555 NFTs. The character they're going with is Cookie Monster. The price per NFT is going to be $60. And Sesame Street has said that they do have future collections planned for this year. Now this week, we did have some major players announce that they were entering Web3. Of course, we saw the job posting 
for a Web3 position for the Pokemon company, as well as that 22 minute video by MapleStory. I talked about these on Tuesday. If you wanna know about that, you could watch this video. I'm not gonna dive into details about them right now. However, although we're seeing some major brands enter Web3, we're also seeing some taking some steps back as Meta is pausing their plans for NFT with Facebook and Instagram. As seen in this post by Stefan Casriel, who is leading commerce and fintech at Meta. Here he says, we're winding down digital collectibles, AKA NFTs, to focus on other ways to support creators, people, and businesses. Now the program has only been live for roughly one year, where creators were able to mint, sell, and share NFTs on their platform. I've personally never seen or used this feature before. However, I don't think this has so much to do with NFTs or Web3. I think it has more to do with the company restructuring, as on the same day, they fired 10,000 employees and they canceled 5,000 open positions. The final news story of the week is Blur launching their mobile functionality for browsing and buying NFTs. I did connect my wallet and try it out. It's a bit janky, there are some bugs with it. However, it is very good to see them moving so quickly. I know many people who were waiting for Blur mobile functionality. A lot of people mint from their phone, so it's great that they're able to trade NFTs from their phone as well. And if you don't have access to a laptop or a computer, you could finally start earning those Blur points for the next airdrop on your phone. Now, although you can't bid on anything, so you can't bid farm for the moment, they did say that this is coming very soon. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you are already subscribed to my channel, would you kindly hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification. Thank you for watching the Crypto Gorilla. Peace.